Hi everyone, in this video I would like to demo some uh, new features in Race Replay 14.1 uh, regarding calibration. So here we go. The first thing that's changed is that if you go in the config file manager, let's bring that up. In the known variables, you will see that we have some changes down here. We used to have an original true and direction. We now have an MHU offset, which corresponds to the offset of your uh, wind wand so if you do have that in the log, uh, that'll make calibration a lot easier to specify it here. So let's have a look. Let's run race replay. So if I've already, already prepared a little bit this session and I've made some phases, uh, but there's another video to, to view how, how do you do that. What I did add though, so this is a windward leeward and you can see the boat is going to go upwind first across the start line and then start going upwind and then all of a sudden it changed, it uh, changes sails, it was on a J2, on sorry, it was on a J1 and then it passes here and it changes to J2 and also later on You'll see on the second run, it goes from an A1 to an A2. And this is one of the things I want to um, demo in this video. So the first thing we need to do as usual is to go over all the tax and jibes. And so to do that, we'll go and view panels and view tax jibe table. And we're going to have to go through the tax and jibes one by one. But now there's a, an added feature to automate this process a bit more. And the way you do this is with this auto wand. So let's look into it. Uh, how do I configure that? First of all, let's get rid of this uh, gain graph, which is more for performance. We're still looking at calibration. Uh, so if I go to in the uh, options, so that's the main options, I can tell it here that um, these are the default stability values of variation that I accept for my before and my after one. So I'm saying for attack, I want no more than seven degrees of change in my heading in the before and the after wand. And in boat speed, I want no more than one knot. And in the jibes, I'm a bit more tolerant because downwind there might be a bit more boat movement and also the boat speed might change a bit. So once I've, I've set those, and this is um, these settings you'll, you'll, uh, you'll guess as you go, you try some, and you'll see that if it doesn't find something, it'll tell you why, so you can, you can um, refine that. So now I've got my first stack, and I can click on Auto Wand, and it's automatically moved those wands, so that makes it a lot faster. Then you can click to the next, go to the next, or even faster, if you see there's an F3 that appears here. If I click on my keyboard F3, it goes to the next. So that makes it a relatively smooth process, F3, and then I can quickly go through all those. And if for some reason it didn't never found that stability, you would get a message and it would be up to you to either say this is not valid for calibration or maybe to go back in those uh, settings and say, well, let's be a little bit more tolerant on how much variation I authorize. And a couple more tags. So you see it does a pretty good job of finding places which are which are nice. Uh, nice and steady. So I'm all done here with my tax and jive. So it's already uh, quite a fast operation. I can close that. This information will get saved in my event file. So make sure you, you save your work. Now, uh, we should in theory do the same for mark roundings. Um, so mark roundings are going to be under maneuver, mark roundings, view table. Let's see what it's got. And I see the first one here is in the pre-start. I'm definitely not interested in that one. And then it's found two other mark roundings. In that case, there is no auto detect, but it's up to you to, to move those ones. Let's go to the next one. And that's pretty good. Also, uh, sometimes Race Replay does not detect some of the mark roundings, so I'll show you how to add some when it hasn't detected them. So let's move a boat to the first stop mark here and see if it's found. 
So in fact, it found top mark here, and I think um, let's go to the downward. Oh yeah, it's found two top marks, but it failed to found find the the bottom mark. So let's go to the bottom. Here's my bug coming to the mark, and as you can see here, it rounds. And if it hasn't found it, I think this case, case it has. Anyway, if it hasn't found it, one way you can add them, I think in that case it found them all, so that's fine. Um, but if has, it does not find them, you can go click in the C and say add, add boat, mark rounding. And then that should refresh, oh, here it is, we've got it, we've got it here. Uh, one has been um, invalidated, that's why. So here's another mark rounding. So we go here and here. So that's done with the mark roundings. We've uh, created all our phases already. And uh, now one last thing we wanted to look at for uh, in the team versions of the tools, you can actually look at what happens when you change a sail if you were to, to be on a boat where you actually have different upwash tables for different sails. So let's pretend we do. Let's say we have an upwash table for a J1 and a different one for a J2. And same thing for the um, asymmetricals for an A1 and A2, I have different tables. So the way you need to pre-process that as well in a similar fashion, I will go to tools and then you go to calibration and upwash analysis. So that comes up with a first page where it says, I've detected those sales up. Now, which upwash tables are they associated to? So I've predefined those. Uh, some might be unassigned, some have, might have some, some funny tables, but you can add tables and then make sure, like you might have some sales, like maybe a J2 and a J3 are similar in size. So you would have a J, an upwash table called J2, J3 and assign that both to the J2 and the J3, which means that when we change sales from J2 to J3, there's nothing to study because you're not changing tables. So this is the assignment of sales up to upwash tables and I give them, gave them names that match perfectly the, the sales. Click on continue. It's now uh, pointing me to all the different sale changes it's found. Some of them are probably not interesting. Like at the top mark, I went from a J2 to an A1. Uh, so that's not really in a straight line. Uh, I'm not gonna change anything here. And same from an A1 to a J2, and a J2 to an A1 again. So I'm left with two uh, cell changes. And if I click on one, you can see that that is in fact in a straight line, and I went from J1 to J2. So let me place those wongs here. And let's go look at the last one from an A1 to an A2. So that was a change of tables. It tells you here that we went from cell A1 to cell A2, and Caleb table A1 to A2. So I'm just going to try and, and, and find um, places where the boat was going at roughly the same touring angle and possibly the same, uh, uh, constant boat speed. Close that, and I'm now all done, and I can go and run my new calibration report. That's run in the same way. I click on report, calibration report, and the titles of those pages have changed slightly. So we still have the speed of calibration with default variables, and you can add some uh, extra variables here, let's add the rudder. Then I've got an MHU offset and true and angle upwash section. And in my case, I do have a MHU offset in my data. So that's gonna be, and it's gonna be good. And you'll see why it's gonna help me calibrate uh, more, it's gonna be a lot better. So I'll select that and say, yes, it, it's correct. I do have it and it's under MHU off, which is the race replay uh, standardized name. And then it does ask me, uh, when I increase the MHU offset, what does it do to the apparent wind angle on starboard, on starboard tack? Well, on my boat, I've tested it. I've gone, I've sailed upwind on starboard tack. I've looked at the apparent wind angle. I went in my electronics and I increased the MHU offset. And the immediate, immediate effect was that the apparent wind angle on starboard tack increased. So this is the one that I want to check. This is something that you'll have to test to know which one is correct. By default, I think most electronics will have that the, uh, the apparent wind angle on starboard attack increases when you increase the MHU offset. You can add extra variables. Uh, we'll um, see that in the uh, report later on. Let's look at true and speed uh, upwash. So this is really during the mark roundings that we went through previously. They're still here. Uh, we want to look at how the true and speed increases or decreases when we're upwind and downwind so as to correct um, the uh, true and speed by adding or subtracting upwash, wind speed upwash. 
And then last one, the sale change upwash. So we don't have to, uh, we can add extra variables. There's some default variables and we'll look at the report itself. And then uh, it gives you options of ignoring sale changes where no change of calibration table, such as what we mentioned previously. If I'm going to J2 and J th to J3, but I don't change tables when I do this sale change, then ignore that. And then there's some tables, some uh, fill combinations have not, might not be been assigned a table. In that case, I don't want to see them in my report. Click OK. Save this report. And it came up in my other page. So let's have a look at it now. So we have kind of a first page page guide which gives you some gives us some uh, immediate information on what we're going to get so we've asked for four reports which are in the other tabs and i can already see that for my speedo calib i'm going to have plenty of phases on port and starboard upwind and downwind so it'll be interesting to look at those numbers for the tax and jives i've got two tax from port to starboard four from starboard to port and only one jive port to starboard two starboard to port so that's not a huge amount of data, but we can still probably look at the calibration for that. Then the mark roundings, we validated one top mark and two bottom marks. And then for the cell changes, we have one change from table J1 to table J2 and one change from table A1 to table A2. So let's um, delve into it. Let's look at the speedo calib. And this is a slight different presentation than it used to be, but the basically the numbers are all the same. It's something that will immediately look at when I'm upwind or downwind, what's the uh, delta between boat speed and speed over ground, and what does that come out to in percentage? Is my speedo correct? So in my case, my, my observation would be like I'm within 1%, boat speed is within 1% of speed over ground. I know that that day I was sailing in the meds on a day there was virtually no current. So this discrepancy is probably due to a small misalignment of my speedo, but it's very tolerable 1%. So I'm pretty happy here. Next one, masthead unit offset. So here we have a whole lot of information. First of all, there's a summary table, which we will look at at the top. And then there's actually uh, an offset proposal here, which is something we'll be able to play with. Um, and then I've got a group of uh, table of tax, a table of jives. And as previously, I'm always showing ports and starboard values and looking at the delta. So in terms of uh, how I'm going to play with my wand offsets, what's really interesting is going to be what is my, how is my apparent wind angle from port to starboard. So obviously this, this holds provided that when I was tacking and for each of those tacks, I was hard on the wind on one tack and hard on the wind on the other tack and there was no major uh, wind shift, I guess, or nothing, nothing funny. So I would expect uh, these numbers to be similar um, also note that I've got my MHU offset and that I did change the offset during the day. Um, and if you scroll to the very end, you will see a bunch of cryptic calculations here. And this is where the magic happens. So it says towards the end of the day, I was at 1.9 of offsets. That's what I had set. But what happens if I change that now? Here, it reminds you, first of all, try me, like this is one you can play with. And also it reminds you that the, the, uh, the checkbox that you checked that said that if you increase the offset, it would increase the true in angle on the, in fact, it's the apparent wind angle, but it's also the true in speed and the true in angle on starboard tack. So as you can see here, I've got my old apparent wind angle. I had minus 0 0.7 delta between the two. Um, now taking into account that I did change during the day, so I'm never going to get these numbers perfect. But if I bring it back down a little bit, if I go to 1.5, I'm improving my apparent wind angle from, from uh, port to starboard. They're becoming more symmetric. So once I'm done with all this process, I can actually confidently go back on the boat the next day and correct this 1.9 and put a 1.5 in it. And in fact, did all the recalculation taking in account what was the offset at the time of this tack. And then you will see scrolling down in these, all these magic numbers, I'm actually adding, uh, I'm actually correcting that apparent wind angle with the new offset, considering what I had. 
and consider what I'm suggesting now. So this should really help you to uh, to correct that uh, that uh, wound offset. Now the next part is this upwash angle. Um, slight change here as well. We used to display a range of true and angle in which I tacked and a range of heading, and same for the downwind. Now I'm actually saying, well, here's the average upwind angle looking at true and angle and looking at heading. So that's virtually the same. I looked at what was my heading before and after the tack. This is how much heading I tacked through, and I, I cut that in two, and I, and, I, and I say this was an upwind, upwind angle in terms of heading. Same thing in terms of course cog and a little reminder for what the polar is. And then what we're mostly interested in is what's the delta between my true end angle and my heading, my true end angle and my course, and my true end angle and my course over ground. So theoretically, true end angle should take into account leeway, which means that I would want to have my true end angle as close possible to my course. So as you see, my true end angles are on average around three degrees larger, so wider than my course. My up angle is on average 35.7, and in terms of course, I'm on 30.3. So with that info, in this true in speed, around the 13 true in speed mark, I could go back to my upwash table and subtract three degrees to the upwash angle table in true in speed 13, and that should correct and tighten my true in angles a bit. Same exercise to be done with the, um, uh, with the uh, downwind angles. Now we move to our true wind speed upwash. This hasn't changed. I'm looking at what was my true wind speed upwind, what was it downwind. On average, I can see that it was maybe a little bit higher downwind. Maybe not enough data to really conclude here, but there is a trend with the last two here. And Usually what we do, so this is what I'm going to correct. I want to correct my upwash, my wind speed upwash angle, and I usually leave everything at zero upwind and say that I want, what I need to correct is my downwind. And so here, I would like to subtract 0 0.7 to whatever coefficient I had in my wind speed upwash table around in the downwind column around this, these types of values of true wind speed. Final tab, sail changes. So I've got my uh, uh, a table for every time I went from the J1 to the J2 table. It might be in a different order, but here it says I only have one case of that, but I went from J1 to J2 in terms of sail, and that means that in to the table I went from the J1 to the J2. If I were to have another row where I went from the J2 to J1, it would reorder all the numbers and say and compare what numbers I had with table one and with table two. So I do have summaries and I can see that when I went from my J1 to my J2, the true in speed seems to have gone up one. So possibly I could decide to correct my J2 table and subtract one knot of wind when I was upwind in this wind range. And we could also look at the true and angle um, and say that maybe there was a there is a, a, tr a shift that might happen more with with uh, downwind sails where you have a smaller a bigger sail with the A1 a smaller sail with the A2. It's quite um, common that you will have the angle that reads differently because of the upwash going into the the wand. Well, when you have a number of those lines here, you might start seeing a trend that systematically when I go from the A1 to, with, to the A2, I seem to lose five degrees of true and angle. Maybe that's something I need to correct on my A1 or my A2 table. Right, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions about calibration, don't hesitate to contact us.